and the odds were stacked up against me. You know, my first job was working in the cotton fields as a migrant worker, um, you know, back in the early 80s um, with, with my family, you know, a role of, you know, 35 uh, Hispanics working in the cotton field, and, and I knew then that, that I needed to get out of this. Uh, and I was one of the first ones to graduate uh, from high school in my family and, and get a college degree. I think modeling simulation chose me because um, when I was active duty in the Navy, didn't know really what I was going to do, uh, and I got an opportunity to work at a, um, at a training and simulation command right out of the Navy. Had no idea what simulation was, uh, but they said, oh, you'd be great, you know how to operate the, the system, so I, I looked at trying to get as much education in simulation as I could. And back then, there was no undergraduate degrees in simulation. Uh, but the community uh, and the industry was growing rapidly uh, here in Hampton Roads and in other parts of the country. Uh, and so I wanted to get as much education as I could in that. And now we have undergraduate degree programs, we have master's degree programs, and uh, now PhD programs uh, here at Old Dominion. Modeling simulation touches the sciences, touches the arts, touches business, uh, and of course engineering. Anything engineering could require the use of modeling and simulation, even from building a bridge to building a game to building a, a training simulation will require some type of modeling and some type of simulation. Most any project nowadays requires modeling and simulation of some form or fashion. That's sort of the message that we got to get to students that are coming in uh, to Old Dominion College of Engineering that MSVE touches all aspects of engineering. I think it's important because I mean we've hired a number of graduates from Old Dominion uh, Modeling and Simulation Program, um, and it's focused in what my company does, Simis, uh, is, is simulation, and, and you can't really get the education from other universities. So luckily for us, we're here in Hampton Roads, and we work closely with MSVE, Dr. McKenzie, and the VMASC uh, in trying to identify candidates for, for my company. It's because the moment a student sees that it's hard, harder than expected, they're willing to go to a different college or, or try a different degree program. Well, it's engineering because it's hard. And, and, and it's hard because you, know, you need the math and you need the sciences uh, to be able to, to do the job that I'm gonna require you to do when you come work for me. And diversity is important for not just um, you know, diversification uh, in, in you as a portfolio, but we want to diversify as it relates to Hispanics, minorities, um, you know, and I'm going to talk about, you know, where we are today as it relates to the census um, and where are the jobs in the future um, and how we can get these jobs and how much you're going to be making with these jobs. I think it was very motivational that, to listen how Dr. Garcia went through a lot to get to be the successful man that he is right now. It was awesome. I didn't think that I was going to meet a guy that's successful and that it's applying engineering in many areas of research. His talk was very inspiring. Uh, on a very important topic. He has lots of background in this topic with a military background, um, a very limited uh, educational access as a, as a young person. So he's come a long way and we're very proud to have him uh, give us his time today. First, because he is Hispanic, I, and because he was talking about engineering. I think I always like to be part of this kind of talks because it gives me motivation. So. I knew that this was going to happen. I believe what I'm doing in our community, what I'm doing at ODU, potentially could inspire one or five or ten of these young men and women that are graduating from ODU to give back to ODU.